Hello, viewers. This is Vaishnavi, Assistant Professor for PG and Research Department of Economics at the Lakshmi Ramaswamy College. We are going to see the classical versus initial interpretation of saving and investment, bringing equality between saving. According to classist, existence of fully employed economy, that means that there is full employment in economic activities or full employment uh, existing in the economy and saving investment are always equal. According to the classes, we think that savings and uh, investments will always equal together and will uh, find its equilibrium together. Uh, then, saving and investment are a function of the rate of interest. Of course, saving is the rate of interest or it is a function of rate of interest and the investment According to the classist in econ economics, uh, there is existence of uh, full employment in the economy or uh, prevalence of full employment in the economy and uh, saving and investment are always equal because they, they, they thought like that uh, saving and investment will be equal each other in full employed level. Okay, then next one, saving and investment are a function of the rate of interest. Of course, saving is a function of rate of interest and investment is a function of rate of interest. So when we uh, come together or uh, when we bring together saving and uh, investment, then it will be fine to know that saving which is equal to investment. So in this slide, we are seeing uh, that in less than full employment level, because according to cl classes, there will be full employment level. Uh, but if if there is condition existing less than full employment level before approaching or before reaching the full, uh, full employment level, the inequality between, of course, the saving and investment will be inequal because we are not at a uh, reach up, we are not at uh, towards the point of equilibrium so uh, before up uh, before reaching the full employment level uh, yes and i which means saving and investment will be inequal and can be broad that means the gap between or the inequality between the saving and investment can be brought to equality through the mechanism of interest rate of course uh, with the help of interest rate, we can bring saving and investment together or closer to attain equilibrium level because uh, we want to equilibrium or full employment level. We are going to reach the full employment level. Then uh, we are supposed to uh, bring the gap between saving and investment level. Uh, so then uh, we can use the mechanism of interest rate which means we can adjustment or we can bring the adjustment in interest rate so far so that we can bring the gap or fill the gap between S and I, which means saving and investment. Then when the rate of interest rises, saving rises, of course, and investment declines. If the rate of interest rises, then the people uh, naturally, they are urged to save more because uh, they are whatever they are saving are uh, in the terms of savings. Uh, they will not interested in save if the interest rate is high. Then, if the interest rate is high or rise, then they will tend to save their amount or liquidity with the, with the banks to get more interest rate. So. By interesting, by increasing interest rates, savings can be raised and the uh, investment will be declined. Of course, if they are, uh, if they are actually, if interest rate rises, means uh, the investment will be declined. Of course, because if interest rate is high, then uh, the investor will not approach or will not positively approach towards getting loans and advances so that the investment will be declined automatically because of high in level of interest rate because uh, if interest rate is low then only the investor will uh, freely to are uh, in high number they will go uh, go for loans and advances and furthermore uh, they are uh, they will invest okay so otherwise if interest rate rises or interest interest uh, interest so interest rate is high then savings uh, of course rise uh, 
uh, rises, but uh, the rate of investment will be declined in the part of producers and investors in the economy. The next one, uh, a fall in the rate of interest, of course, on the contrary, a fall in the rate of interest, which will give you uh, falls are decreasing the saving level and uh, investment level will be increased. Of course, at uh, the low rate of interest, people will not curiously or will not be interested in saving or keep their savings with the bank because they are getting low rate of interest. Okay, so in on the contrary, but if the investor are more uh, curiously are more regress or uh, sorry more uh, interested to uh, get uh, additional loans and advances to invest their business business or uh, to enlarge their business. So uh, it is a uh, big time or it is a lucky time to their to them to get uh, loans and advances at the low rate of interest. So it is positive side of for uh, business uh, reinvestors and negative side for savers. Okay, so by adjusting these interest rates, we can bring the changes in saving savings and investment in the economy according to the classes. Okay, then if saving is less than investment, our we can say there is inequality in investment. A rise in the rate of interest brings in decline in investment. An increase in saving will nurture saving equals investment. It means we can, that means uh, by adjusting the rate of interest, we can uh, bring the gap between the saving and investment is possible. Okay, so the savings, savings, is in unequal to investment, we can adjust the rate of interest towards our uh, towards our savior to bring the gap between or uh, to erase the gap between saving and investment or to reduce the gap between saving and investment. Okay, so the rate of interest they consider the rate of interest is the most powerful mechanism according to them uh, with, uh, to uh, bring up uh, to bring up the equilibrium between saving and investment because. Uh, at full employment level, this is to be needed because the economic activities should be in the stable uh, stable status. Then only we can we can go for a development with the equality. Okay, so uh, if saving is more than investment, the rate of interest falls. Of course, as I already told you, investment increases and saving declines till the two are equal at the new interest rate. This is expanded in the following figure. It means we can see in the figure one, we are taking saving and investment in x-axis and the interest rate in y-axis. So we are bringing the combination or the connection between saving and investment with interest rate. Okay. So SS is the saving curve. Yes, S is the saving curve, and I I R I I is the investment curve, which uh, we can see uh, in the diagram. I1, 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 I2, 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 okay. So this is the common or general savings curve, uh, which is which implies S, S upward sloping, okay. So uh, it reveals the relationship between saving and investment and interest rate, okay. So when saving and investment effectively, uh, when saving and investment effectively reacts with the interest rate, then how it could be okay that equilibrium how here we can see where saving and investment are measured on the horizontal axis I, I already told you and the rate of interest on the vertical axis and ss1 which means ss1 or ss is a saving curve which moves upward to the right with the rise in the interest rate of course as interest rate rise interest rate rises the saving curve will upward, moves upward, will move upwards. Okay. So, because uh, as interest rate increases, the saving will also increase. There is direct relationship between uh, saving and interest rate, of course, because if the bank provides highest interest rates, then we, our people, will tend to save more. So, high interest and high saving. So, uh, there is direct relationship between in saving and interest rate okay, according to the economist. Okay. Then, II is the investment curve. I already told it. Uh, of course, uh, I2, I2, I1, I, I, 
I1, I1. These are the investment curves according to the changes in the economy towards a means a depends on the interest. We can say both intersect. That means uh, when the S and I saving curve and investment curve both intersect at point E. When the rate of interest is O R, of course, we can see O R. When the rate of interest O R, this um, yes, of course. When interest is over, then the point is E because we are I one I I curve and S S curve cuts each other, then meets each other. So here E is the point of equilibrium when the rate of interest is O R because we are three R's. Them are meeting together, okay, at point E, because uh, yeah, it is the equilibrium point. R E is the rate of interest. That means of uh, saving. Investment curves are cutting each other, are meeting each other at point E, where the interest rate is both R. So here, saving and investment in uh, are both equally reacted with interest rate. So this is the equilibrium uh, point because uh, we can see yeah we are in the words also the economy is in full employment equilibrium because both saving and investment are equal at R E because the point R E uh, the economy is in the equilibrium at full employment level because why it is in full employment level because saving and investment are equal at the point at this. now we can see suppose investment increases. Um, according to the diagram, I1, I1 curve uh, to RH, okay, from OR to, uh, that means RH, which means uh, RH, the extension of rate of interest, okay, the extension of rate of interest, that means equilibrium level of interest, suppose the investment increases, if, if we increase the investment because it is equilibrium rate, if suppose the condition the rate of interest increase, uh, sorry, at the OR rate of interest, the investment increases from IE to OH. Then what is happening? Then which means saving is RE, which is less than RH investment. In this condition, at this condition, we can say saving is less than investment because investment is more because RE is the investment uh, savings and RH is the uh, investment amount. So, RH minus RE. Okay. So, EH will be the excess investment. So, excess investment. So, we can say uh, that means if there is inequality in savings and investment. Okay. So, what is happening next? The quality, equality between savings and investment can be brought up about by rising the rate of interest. Then, the, this excess investment will be uh, scrutinized uh, will be shortlisted or uh, shortened by increasing the rate of interest. Okay, so increasing the rate of interest means which suppose investment increases as we see in the diagram to RH, uh, that means I1, I1 curve. We can uh, see, we can able to see that uh, highest uh, in, in investment curve. If investment increases to I1, I1, uh, which means uh, uh, from RH, but saving is RE, which is less than RH investment. So we can say RH investment, EH is the difference, our excess investment, we can say, and uh, newer saving will be, that means uh, saving is, that means at point E, the saving is lesser than, e, lesser than the investment. So there is inequality between saving and investment. Uh, in this part, this condition. So, to bring about the equilibrium uh, level, uh, we have to increase the rate of interest. Then, uh, automatically, the investment will be reduced. Of course, at high rate of interest, investment will be reduced. So, uh, at the high rate of interest, on the contrary, the savings rates will be increased. So, savings will also be increased from point E to E1, and uh, it will adjust, uh, it will bring equilibrium at the point E1 goes back here, yeah, new supply curve, sorry, new saving curve and I, uh, the, which means investment curve cuts each other, okay? So here, yeah, um, equality between saving and investment can be brought about by rising the rate of interest to OR1. So if we rise the rate of interest to 
O R from O R to O R one. Then the new equilibrium will be E one, where the savings and investment will be equal. Now, by adjusting the rate of interest. So by raising the rate of interest to O R one, uh, uh, curve interest rate. That means the uh, ss curve intersect the i1 i1 curve at e1 so you can say on the contrary if investment pass from ie to rk we can see in the diagram it means ie to rk ie is the original equilibrium level we assumed earlier then if if the investment uh, declines okay the investment declines from ie to ie r2 r uh, that means I2, I2, because uh, always we can say the leftward shift from the investment curve will show you the declines of investment and rightward, right, uh, that means a uh, right upward sloping up uh, or a shifting of curve will, will uh, give you the incremental of investment and uh, backward shift. Uh, uh, investment curve will show you that means a decrease in the level of investment. Okay. So now it is a condition that uh, changed from the equilibrium level because there is in, in equilibrium in the uh, in the are uh, between the saving and investment. So if investment falls, then what happens? Uh, yes, I do I do curve. So if investment falls means the backward shifting of investment curve will show. That condition and uh, to OR2. Okay, so the OR2 because, uh, yeah, then the interest rate OR2 because investment is very low. So we have to increase the investment rate so that, so that we have to, that means, uh, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to reach the original equilibrium line, we have to increase the investment level. So to increase the investment, we have to reduce the rate of interest. So the here at point O R two O R two is a, uh, a new rate of interest uh, where where saving which is greater than the investment where saving uh, saving is greater than investment okay which means R E is greater than R K okay so uh, equilibrium level of savings is more than the investment so then a falling rate of interest to go or to bring the equality between saving and investment at E2 level. Uh, okay, then this is the uh, new equilibrium level after investment uh, shift backwards, shift backwards. Okay, so this is the new equilibrium level, and uh, we can attain the original original equilibrium level of saving and investment. We have to move towards uh, that means uh, R. To reach to reach a savings and investment equal level that means point E that means the point E one E and E two these are equilibrium points where F savings and investments are equal equally okay so the the mechanism rate of interest will be very helpful to bring uh, the, the saving and investment function together in the economic economic activities or economy to attain. Here before we saw the uh, classical economist view and saving and investment or bringing up the equality between the saving and the investment and they believe that the rate of interest will or uh, the mechanism of rate of interest will definitely help to bring up the equality between saving and investment but here the Keynesian view what he thought about or uh, he thinks about savings and investment equality that means bringing up our interpretation of saving and investment in economic activities okay first point are uh, we can say so these uh there are two points they are Keynes has undertaken uh, regarding the investment and uh, saving concepts explanation okay first one this is the accounting our definition first one first point is accounting our def the uh definition of quality between saving and investment which is used in national income accounting of course now, accounting our definition of equality. That means between uh, this function will be applied in national income accounting, and it also tells us that actual saving and actual investment are always equal at all times, okay, any level of income, of course. Uh, then the second point, according to Keynes, uh, 
it is a functional quality of course it is a functional quality and uh, in this sense we have we can say saving and investment are equal only at the equilibrium level of income okay so the first one is different from the second one how it is different from the second one? first one is uh, here national accounting in national income accounting they are using the method that means definition of equality but here functional equality will be used in bringing up the uh, equal like between saving and investment that means equal equilibrium level of income you can attain that you can attain saving investment equality only at your first one according to Keynes. Accounting are definitional equality. What is what does it mean? Uh, definitional equality is yes, according to Keynes. Uh, in his general theory, uh, that saving and investment are necessarily equal in amount of amount for the community as a whole. Of course, uh, saving investment should be available enough to the economic activities. As a whole, uh, being different aspects of the same thing. In order to show uh, it, in order to show it, he defined saving investment in such a manner as to establish their equality because he tried to converse, uh, he tried to reveal the, uh, he tried to reveal the equality, uh, the the steps to attain the equality between saving and investment. Okay. So both saving and investment in the current period are defined as the excessive current income and over current consumption, so that they are necessarily equal. Which means he says saving and investment both are in the current period. Of course, he says he talks about the current level of saving and investment. Okay, so in the current period are defined as the excess of current income over current consumption, which means saving and investment. Uh, that means. Uh, which is the difference between the income according to Keynes uh, savings current savings is a uh, different uh, that means the difference of current income and current consumption according to the equation one and uh, according to the equation two current investment which is the differentiation in current income and the current consumption so we can see this is common which means uh, current income and current consumption uh, differentiation between these two these two will give you the savings, current savings and current investment, which means, which involves, uh, in other words, we can say saving, current savings which is equal to current investment, of course. Uh, where S is saving and uh, I is investment, Y is income, C is consumption and T is current income. Okay. Then current saving which is equal to current income according to Keynes' first approach. Then Keynes also established this equality in another way. He defined income in the current period as uh, equal to current consumption is current investment and saving in the current period as an excess of current income over current consumption. So he taken uh, he has taken all those things at the current level because uh, he wanted to explain the consumption and investment income uh, level also. So therefore we can say current income which is equal to current consumption and the current investment according to the uh, equation one and according to equation two we can say current uh, income will be equal to current saving plus current consumption of course current investment current consumption which is equal to income and current saving plus uh, current consumption will also be equal to income so current saving which is equal to current income minus current consumption therefore from equation one and two we have uh, we have uh, come to know we have come to know that uh, current consumption plus current investment which is equal to current saving plus current consumption are uh, the current uh, investment equation uh, shows that shows us like that they are both the difference they are the both the difference between so equilibrium process of saving and investment uh, is shown into the two income is measured horizontally and savings and investment vertically uh, SS is your uh, saving curve and IA is the investment curve. When income is more by one, investment is greater than saving. Of course, you can say you can see the difference between more by one level of income and more by one level of income. Yes, one curve is uh, falling under the investment curve. So we can say okay, next investment point is we can say then, uh, more by one is completed than more by two. Next, assume more by two is the level of income now. Now uh, here. 
the saving is extra or um, the saving is greater than investment. So uh, the people tend to save more so, uh, because they are getting more income and employment and all. Okay, so then they consume less and uh, will tend to save more. Okay, then in now the uh, savings are increasing. Savings are increasing than investment. Okay, so at level at at this much level of income, at this much level of income, a higher level of income, the savings are greater than the investment. He tries to say that at more level of income, are more than the equilibrium level of income, the people will. Save more than investment. Then invest. Uh, this will bring a fall in income via the reverse operation of the multiplier. The saving and investment are equally uh, equilibrated at O by income level. Of course, if the extra savings, extra savings will be will be scrutinized or utilized by the consumption level. If we the multiplier effect. And that means reverse multiplier, reverse operation of multiplier effect uh, will uh, will have bring about the changes in the investment or uh, will reduce the in savings and will increase the in uh, investment. So uh, after that point, it will automatically bring the O Y, uh, which means the equilibrium income level. It means here reverse operation of multiplier is working. So whenever there is a gap between saving and investment, the prices are uh, false till the equilibrium level is reached. Of course, according to Keynes, he has taken the level of income, right? The level of income. So till they are reaching what savings and investment, the level of savings and investment reaching, then the uh, income levels will uh, bring equality between uh, between the saving and investment function. Okay. So next one, uh, we can say last uh, about the merits of this approach. When we talk about the merits of this approach or advantages of this approach, Kurihara observes that uh, initial savings and investment schedules are to general equilibrium analysis. What the Marshallian supply and demand curves are to partial equilibrium. So initial savings and investment schedules are general equilibrium analysis. They are called as general equilibrium or they uh, give us uh, general equilibrium analysis, but Marshallian's uh, uh, supply and demand curves are giving partial equilibrium analysis related with partial. Energy. So here we have seen so far uh, the thought of or uh, thinking of uh, the explanation given by teams and classes, uh, classes in economics uh, about saving and investment and bringing the equality between saving and investment. Uh, as I conclude, the classes believe that saving and investment will be uh, brought or will brought uh, together with the help of rate of interest or uh, adjusting the rate of interest. But according to Keynes, uh, the level of income will bring the equality, the level of in income will bring the equality between the saving and investment in the economic uh, economy. Uh, in, for the time period, okay, uh, with the help of multiplayer methods. So this is the difference between uh, classist and uh, initial views on uh, equality in saving and investment function in the economic economy. And thank you for watching my video.